When I was eight years old, I went away to sleepaway camp for my very first time, to Camp Chickawa in Harrison, Maine, and I loved it. In order to swim, though, in the deep water and to do all the boating activities and all that great stuff, you have to take the deep water test. And that summer, I said, no, thank you. I'm not ready for the deep water test. Came back from my second summer at camp, and I loved it even more. But still, I wasn't ready for the deep water test. Third summer, I'm now 10 years old. I am the oldest camper at camp <laughs> not to have taken his deep water test. Everyone knows I'm ready except for me. My parents know, the counselors all know, I'm the only one that doesn't know. My father gets on the phone and calls the camp director, Mo Steinberg. <laughs> Mo, Bradley is going to take his deep water test, or he's not coming home. <laughs> I get paged on the PA system. Bradley Sompson, please report to the waterfront. I make my way down. The head of the waterfront is there. All of the swimming counselors are there. Bradley, today is the day for your deep water test. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm not ready. I don't feel well. Today's not the day. Today's the day. They were patient. They were supportive. I was screaming and crying and kicking and protesting any way I knew how. 45 minutes later, <laughs> I pass my deep water test. And I never looked back. Eight summers as a camper, I fell in love with swimming and sailing and canoeing and kayaking and water skiing. My life was in the lake. I fell in love with everything about the swimming and the water. Favorite part of camp. That journey has been with me my whole life of doing something with support from people who loved me and were around me and who knew me. That journey has been with me up until today even in ways that I had never imagined. So much so that I have devoted my entire career to working with young people as they take their first steps on journeys out into the world to meet new people, to try new things, to have new experiences. Today I want to talk with you about the power of journeys for young people and your role, our role, as adults and parents in supporting them as they take those journeys. Judaism is all about the journey. Moses, Abraham, Joseph, all figured out who they were and all influenced the children of Israel through going out into the wilderness, through trying on new relationships, and doing things that they didn't think they could do. I love that we are commanded to be pilgrims. Three times a year, the shalosh regalim, we are told, ready or not, pack your bags, you're going on a trip. Passover, Shavuot, Sukkot. On Sukkot, we're even commanded to build these fragile, temporary huts and live in them for the week so that we have this experience of being in the wilderness, of being fragile and experiencing what's beyond home for us. I think that experience I had at camp as a camper, taking that deep water test with the support that I had from my counselors, that was my sukkah that enabled me to do something that I didn't think I could do. Okay. It seems very straightforward. Young people thrive and grow through journeys, and our job as adults and parents is to help them take those journeys and to support them along the way. I'm also the parent of three daughters, <laughs> one of whom is a teenager. It's not that easy. It's complicated. I don't know all the right answers. I don't know what to say every time she asks a question. 
I don't know what she means sometimes when she asks a question. What is our role as Jewish parents in supporting our children as they go out on journeys? My father always encouraged me to be independent, as independent as possible. He always pushed me to expand my comfort zone. But there was another side. He really had a hard time asking for help. Later in his life, he struggled with mental illness, and he really had a hard time reaching out to other people. That's something I took away from that experience. I learned a tremendous amount from watching him and from being in relationship with him that when you do go out on a journey, it's so important to have people around you and to be able to ask for help along the way. Any time that we as parents or our teenagers hide from the complexity of what's going on at this time period, for us and for our kids, any time we hide from that complexity, we're not doing our job. How old are Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? I think if we look at the art and pictures and think about the stories, they always seem to be depicted as fully formed. They're in their 20s or early 30s. I want to ask you to come with me on a journey thinking about Adam and Eve in a different way. They're 16 or 17 or 18 years old. They're adolescents. Eve is curious. She is, wants to explore. They both, Adam and Eve, are asking all of these questions. They want to go out of the garden. They want to know what's beyond. They want to test limits. All of these things are normal things for adolescents to do. God is the parent. God hears what Adam and Eve are talking about. God says, uh-uh, you're not going out of the house. I'm locking the door. I'm double locking the door. God doesn't want them to go out. God says to Adam and Eve, if you eat from the fruit of this tree, you're going to die. God is not interested in them exploring or going out on any kind of journey. And then we meet the snake. Right? We meet an outside influence. What do we make of the snake? Rabbi David Klein, who I'm fortunate to call my father-in-law, <laughs> taught me that the snake is the first teacher we encounter in the Torah. Subversive, 100%. But sometimes we need subversive teachers. Sometimes we need teachers that encourage us to take risks, to try new things, to ask questions. But God here, my sense is that God blows it. God fails in supporting Adam and Eve in their going out on a journey. I don't think that we can just say, no, you can't go. So that leaves us with the question of, well, what can we do when our children want to explore the world, which is so good for them? What is our role? I think we can help them think about some questions that are going to be helpful to us and helpful to them. We want to ask, when you do go on that journey, what's the right path? What's the right context for your journey? Who are the right people you're going to go on that journey with? Who's going to accompany you on that journey? What's your destination? Those are all the questions that we want to be asking and that we want our children to be asking when they go on those journeys. When they go, there are going to be lots of different types of journeys that they're going to go on. They're going to go on journeys towards something, like the family vacation. They're going towards that exciting destination. They're going to go on journeys from things. When I was 14 years old, my parents were getting a divorce. I asked my mom if I could go to boarding school, and she supported me on that journey away from. There's also metaphorical journeys, right? I think meeting a new friend, 
making a new friend is a metaphorical journey. There's also actual journeys where you pack your bag and you go out. There's journeys that are one-way journeys, like going off to college. And there are also journeys that are round trip, summer camp, right? At summer camp, we get to try new things, meet new people. We get to learn how to make our own decisions for the first time in a safe space. We get to learn how to live with people who are different from us. All of that happens, then we get to go home and come back and try it again. It's that incredible round trip journey. So it's complicated. It's so hard thinking about what is our role and what is the role of our teenagers. How do we support them best? I am really blessed. I finished eight summers as a camper, and then I became a swimming counselor. <laughs> I became the head of the waterfront at a different camp. And today, I am the executive director of a Jewish sleepaway camp. Because we're carrying all of that with us wherever we go. I love that in chapter 25 of the book of Exodus, God commands the children of Israel to build a portable sanctuary so that no matter where they go, they will have Judaism with them on their journeys. Va'asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. Make me this mikdash, a portable sanctuary, so that I may dwell among you. That is another gift we can give to our children when they're out on their journey. The knowledge that they're surrounded by tradition, they're surrounded by community, they're surrounded by relationships. Of course, when our children leave home, that's hard for us. Of course it is. We want them to be safe. We want to take care of them. We want to protect them. But there's something else that's going on too, I think. For parents, when their children leaves home, leave home and go on journeys, I think we also might be scared that they may choose paths different from our own. And that's hard too for us but I know that we want them to question. I know we want them to become their best selves. And when you go out on a journey, when our children go out into the world, that is when they figure out who they are. When they go out into the world, they figure out what matters to them. And maybe most importantly, when they go out into the world, that's when they figure out how they themselves can help make the world a better place. Thank you.